Thank you, David, for your very kind introduction. And thank you to the ECCC administrators, His Excellency Tony Kron and Newt Rosentaug, and Han Van Eck, director of the ECCC's Victim Support Section, for organizing this important workshop. Thank you to judges Yu Watara and Claudia Fens for your thoughtful advisory report and recommendations to keep a victim-centered approach as the ECCC moves forward. And thank you, Daniel, for your invitation. It is truly an honor to join you all this morning. Pursuing justice for victims and survivors of the Khmer Rouge regime has been a part of my life since 1995, when I began working with Yoke Chang and the Documentation Center of Cambodia as a young law student passionate about human rights. The office I now lead has a special connection to the pursuit of justice for the people of Cambodia. Former Ambassador David Sheffer first led our office. He went on to help establish this tribunal, advised the United Nations Secretary General on assistance to the ECCC, and was a contributor to the advisory report that recommended this workshop you are attending today. We care deeply about the legacy of the ECCC. This includes not only the valuable role it has played investigating and prosecuting those most responsible for the Khmer Rouge's atrocities and developing important jurisprudence. Equally vital is the role it has played in establishing the truth and in enabling some measure of healing among the survivors, their families, and their communities. This combination of justice, truth, and healing will, it is hoped, reassure the people of Cambodia and the world that this country will never experience such terrible violence again. As you begin to develop ideas on how the ECCC can include meaningful victim-related initiatives as an integrated part of its residual work, I would like to recognize some of the impact that civil parties, comprised of and representing victims and survivors and their representatives' victim-centered approach have made already. First, you've played an unprecedented role in the ECCC's process of justice. Although the participation of victims other than as witnesses was not initially envisioned in the agreement that established the ECCC, the internal rules incorporated the concept of victim participation from Cambodian domestic criminal procedure. Rules governing civil parties evolved over time as the court adapted to the realities of implementing a more victim-centered approach. It is this adaptability and the willingness to respond positively to experiences and lessons learned that also makes this precedent a positive model for others. Second, you've exerted a lasting impact on jurisprudence. It was the civil party's ability to request investigative acts that led to the inclusion of forced marriages in the indictments against Nguyen Chea and Kyu Sem Phong. And as you know, these two defendants were convicted of these crimes in case 2-2. Third, you've been instrumental in ensuring victim reparations. Following the insufficient reparations provided for in case one, the internal rules were significantly amended to include the establishment of a system of consultations with civil parties on reparations. The broad range of reparation projects subsequently proposed, including memorialization projects, educational outreach programs, and the unprecedented provision of psychosocial support for victims, demonstrate that the goals of achieving recognition, remembrance, and reconciliation are achievable. I want to acknowledge the disappointment caused by the ECCC's long delays in delivering justice that resulted in only three convictions, and the disappointment around the closing of the last three cases without their going to trial. These concerns are legitimate and understandable. I hope that the ongoing work of the ECCC's residual functions, especially to preserve the tribunal archives and ensure their accessibility, and to continue its victim-centered approach, will help to alleviate some of this disappointment. I would like to quote Benjamin Ferenz, the last surviving prosecutor of the World War II Nazi war trials, who said that to avoid revenge and retaliation, victims of oppression must know that their oppressors have been brought to justice and efforts must be made to heal the wounds of those who have suffered. I do believe that the record of the ECCC, the thousands and thousands of pages of closing orders, transcripts, verdicts, and appeals are a form of truth-telling, and truth-telling can be a form of justice. The record of the ECCC will continue to play a critical role in telling the story of what happened in Cambodia and identifying who was responsible. With the establishment of residual functions of the ECCC, and with the encouragement laid out in the advisory report recommendations, you have a rare opportunity to ensure that efforts continue to be made to heal the wounds of those who have suffered. 
I wish you all the best in your endeavors at this workshop, knowing that you are proceeding with the same compassion and dignity that has informed all of your engagements with the Tribunal to date, and I look forward to learning more about your progress.